welcome everybody. Thank you for joining Dr. Gretchen and I and Yvonne today. Hi everybody. In celebration for MS Awareness Month. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mindy Eisenberg and I'm the director of Yoga Moves MS. We provide all kinds of adaptive yoga and holistic health education. Uh, we are a nonprofit, so we have daily Zoom classes that are live. We have an on-demand library with recordings. And in Michigan, we have in-person classes. And we teach people around, actually, just did a training where we had a few from Italy. My goodness. So we teach different Everywhere. yoga instructors and physical therapists and occupational therapists and okay. nurses, clinicians to teach yeah. adaptive yoga. So we want to spread the love of yoga moves around the world. That's our mission, and Dr. Gretchen helps us do that. Dr. Gretchen, do you want to introduce yourself, and then we're going to have Yvonne tell her story before we get going with our stretching. Sure, yeah, so I'm Dr. Gretchen. It's nice to meet all of you guys. I am a physician. Oh, oh, hold on. Sorry, that was my bad. I was on mute. Okay. <laughs> I'm Gretchen. If you guys don't know who I am, I am a doctor of physical therapy and a multiple sclerosis specialist. And I, similar to Mindy, do a lot of my work online. One of my biggest missions is to increase accessibility to physical therapy specific for multiple sclerosis. And I found that when I was working in a PT clinic, so many of my clients couldn't come to me consistently enough to actually reap the benefits of exercising for MS. So that's why I launched my online program, The Missing Link, and also teach Zoom classes. You can find me all over social media. Thank you, Dr. Gretchen, and we so appreciate that you're joining us today and all of you. Now, Yvonne's been a yoga boot student. Did you figure out how long it's been, Yvonne? It's been about 12 to 13 years. <laughs> I joined you about in 2011. And um, um, I'll have Yes, yes, yes. I'll, I'll, have have I'll had MS for approximately um, 30 years. And at that particular time of my life, 12 years ago, I had a catastrophic thing happen in my life. And I had joined you with the yoga moves, and it has helped me drastically with what I was going through, and I'm able to move and keep moving. And I really do appreciate that. So I love yoga moves. It works for me, and it works for everybody. All you have to do is just move it before you lose it. <laughs> She's not kidding. This woman means business when it comes have to, to moving. Have to, have to. I also... My watch, I try to do at least 2,000, 3,000 steps a day. And if I don't, I can tell the difference if I'm not moving, you know, moving, moving, moving all the time, up and down. I live in a house that I have stairs. I use my stairs as a, a stairmaster, other than stairs. Right. I use it like a <laughs> therapy house. I go up there, I take my time, I do whatever I have to do to go to class in the basement. And um, it's very good. I'm very impressed with everything that Yoga Moves is doing for me. Aww. How does the yoga help you? It helps in everything. It helps me mainly with the stretching. It makes my legs feel uh, a lot um, a lot more, whew, what's the word I'm looking for, Mindy? When I can move them better. I can move my legs better. More mobility. More mobility. Increase mobility. mobility. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, that's a good segue to you, Dr. Gretchen, to talk about, first of all, you've all joined because you wanted to be with Dr. Gretchen, but you also joined because we said stretching was our topic. So Dr. Gretchen, can you tell everyone what the benefit of stretching is? Why, why would people want to embark on a regular stretching practice? Yes. So when most of my clients think of stretching, they often think of it as just like an optional thing to do or just something that you would do when you're feeling tight. But having tight muscles can be so many different levels of tightness and any amount of tightness can actually restrict your mobility. So if you have difficulty walking and especially if you feel like something's holding you back. Like you're kind of walking through mud, 
or you're trying to lift your leg or move, but it's just really restricted and challenging. One huge potential reason for that could be some form of spasticity or muscle tightness. So if you're able to release that muscle tightness, even before you get to that point, as Yvonne is saying, you're going to feel improvement in your mobility. So improved mobility is my favorite reason to focus on stretching, but of course it also improves blood flow which can be very helpful in MS, especially if you have pooling around your feet or your ankles and you get some swelling, stretching can actually help with that as well. And stretching in various parts of your body, not just your legs, can actually help reduce the risk of injury, which is great because when you have MS, and even if you don't, but especially if you have MS, our risk of injury when we're moving is so high, especially places like our low back or our hips or our knees. So the more stretching that you do, you're able to uh, reduce that risk so that hopefully you're staying more mobile without any sort of pain or discomfort. Yeah, we hadn't thought about all those reasons. <laughs> Sounds good, Diane. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Injury prevention is a big one, circulation. Yeah, it's amazing because when we do the yoga, you can see the change in the color skin and the feet, you know, just from getting the circulation going from some simple, simple things. Cautions that we should take when we're starting our stretches that, that come to mind to you, Dr. Gretchen. Yeah, so one, the, the biggest precaution I would say is that stretching should never be painful. And I don't know where this stems from, but I think most of us, myself included, grew up being told to stretch until you feel it. And oftentimes that means until you really feel it. Yeah. And that's one way to stretch, but you don't necessarily have to feel a big stretch in order to actually be stretching the muscle. And we're going to do several demonstrations, but you don't need to feel a big stretch. Just simply being in a stretched position is stretching the muscle. So stretching should never be painful or, you know, I do think it might for some people be a little uncomfortable, but uncomfortable is not the same thing as pain. Uncomfortable is okay in my book because you're tight. Of course, it's going to be a little uncomfortable as you're stretching, depending on how tight you are, but it shouldn't be painful. That is the biggest thing. And then other than that, more so just precautions of while you're stretching, like you shouldn't hold your breath. Most of us, and I even catch myself every now and then, like holding my breath as I'm stretching, especially if it feels like a big stretch. So but you're catching yourself. That's key. Yeah. And so that awareness, being extremely aware yes. while you're stretching so that, you know, if you're feeling the stretch in the right spot how intense it is. Do you need to push further or back off? Are you breathing? Just these helpful reminders along the way. Yeah. So I, a lot, I, I agree with you about this discomfort versus pain. We hear that a lot um, in yoga and in mindfulness, we focus on sensation, but we also give the cue to start maybe about 20% or 30% in weight because sometimes you don't feel the stretch right away because you can always move a little bit more into it over time. Um, but that is one of the things that I think yoga and breathing really helps with is, is determining what's pain, what's discomfort, when am I going too far? In yoga, we talk about the edge a lot. And we have some intense discussions in class about what the edge is. <laughs> And yeah, whether it's hard. go over it or not. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to know. And especially if you are not used to checking in with your body, this conversation of, oh, is, are you doing too much of a stretch or too little? You might have no idea. You might be thinking like, I don't know. I think I'm doing it right. And that's okay. The first step is just that awareness. What does it feel like? How comfortable or uncomfortable is it? And getting to be in tune with your body over time, you'll be able to answer those questions pretty easily of, okay, yeah, this is too much for me, or this is too light. I can push a little bit further. So that awareness is again, the number one, and it takes time. If you're new to all of this, 
you might not feel confident answering those questions or being in tune with your body for a month. And that's okay. Just still stay consistent and still practice with it. So that brings up another question. Before um, we get to that, make sure you put in the chat where you're from. We'd love to know what city, state, country. That would be fun. And also, if you have questions, you may place them in the chat and we will get to them towards the end of the session. So how often should we stretch? This is a question that's a little bit different for each person, but there are some general rules of thumb. So you should stretch, I think, before you exercise. And we'll talk a little bit later about the different types of stretching, but it's important to stretch before you move, especially if you're going to be doing a strengthening practice or strengthening exercise routine. And it's also important to stretch afterwards, after any form of exercise or walking. And the reason that's important is because while strengthening exercises are amazing and we need them, they shorten your muscles. And so if you don't take time to stretch after and you go on your about your day-to-day -day life, you're moving on in your day-to-day -day life with tightened or shortened muscles. So stretching after is extremely important. And then other than that, it really depends on your level of tightness. I actually have a hair tie here. So I like to do a demonstration. <laughs> so, <That's great. laughs> so when you have tight muscles, they are shortened. So this is, I'm not pulling it at all. This is how picture this being one of your muscles. So if you don't stretch it, it's, it's shortened like this, then you stretch it and it feels nice and stretched and long and lengthened and you're good to go. The longer you go without stretching. So as, as the hours go by during the day, naturally it's going to get shorter and shorter and shorter until it's back to the point of it's shortened position. And then you stretch again. So if you're only stretching once per day, you'll get, you'll feel nice and better and strong and lengthened. And then by the next day, you're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I really need that stretch again because you didn't do anything between that. So if you are someone who feels tight often or feels like your spasticity is increasing often, what I recommend doing is stretch maybe before and or after you exercise. And then over time, it's going to lessen, but two hours later, you're going to stretch again. And then you're going to relax, relax, go about your day. And then you stretch again two hours later. So you're now playing at a range of fully lengthened to about here, which is not your fully shortened position. So the more you stretch throughout the day, you're not even allowing it to get to that fully shortened position, which can be beneficial over time. So if that's the case, maybe stretch and stretching doesn't need to be an hour. It doesn't need to be 30 minutes. It could be one muscle group if you wanted it to be, but stretch maybe once every hour or once every two hours, once every four hours. It's going to be different for each person, but make it a consistent thing throughout your day. Now, we usually, when we start class, we'll get to some of these demos um, and make sure to put your questions in the chat. We usually start class with... We do have one question already, which I we already have a question. Do you think it, we should? I think it, it now it's a here. nice intro to it because it, the question was, how do I stretch if I can't get on the floor? Okay, okay. that is a great segue, and I think someone's waiting to get in. Um, so what if you can't get on the floor? What are we going to do? What are we going to do, Yvonne? We're going to stretch in the chair. Absolutely, absolutely. So Yvonne, do you have a favorite stretch? Yes, one of my favorite stretches I was just doing it was the um, gentleman pose. Just oh, oh sure. did you get it here? Yep. Mm -hmm. So know that we're not necessarily going in an order that we would in a class where we first do some breathing and some joint, right. you know, move our joints around, our ankles right. and our wrists and all kinds of things. So you like gentleman's pose? Yes, that's one of them. Okay, and why do you like it? What happens after gentleman's pose? It helps, it helps my leg to feel a little bit more um, able to move when I move with my hip and everything. I mean, I'm not walking, walking, but I can at least move it a little bit more easier. And I can tell when I do it and when I don't do it. Yes, yeah, big difference. And while I'm doing that, I'm also working my ankles at the same time. So I'm getting, you know, 
double whammy here. <laughs> right, you've got your sacks on, but we have the yoga handshake. Yeah, you know the yoga handshake. You yeah. put your fingers in between your toes, right, and move those toes around because it's so important to um, give lots of attention to our feet. Sometimes we do a little tapping, and we've got our ball there. Dr. Gretchen knows about the the neuro ball that we get some movement going on the bottom of the feet. So that's a lot of things we do before. Now, what are some variations with number four? If Yvonne is able to put her foot or her ankle over her thigh, but if that's not available at this moment, you could do something like this, or sometimes we stack up a few blocks. And if, if we're really tight in the inner thigh, then this could be enough. This could be enough. Um, sometimes we stack it a little bit higher or maybe rest the leg on a chair. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say about number four, gentleman's pose, Dr. Gretchen? I was going to say that's one of my favorites as well. I personally have a lot of tightness in my hips. So that one always just feels like a huge sigh of relief once I feel that stretch. Um, but yeah, there's for any stretch, you can do it in any position. So most people think of stretching on the floor, but you can do it seated like that. You could even do it standing. You could do it from a couch. It doesn't even have to be like a nice sturdy chair. So there's lots of different positions, but that that's one of my favorite. Yes. I'll just show quickly on the floor um, is this. So this is number four. And then people can vary it by how close they bring their knees in towards them. So if they're real tight, it might be here. If they've got more mobility arranged, it might be closer in. Mm -hmm. And I see Yvonne right now. So you are way more flexible than I am. So what Yvonne uh, is doing. Her, we call that rocking the baby. Yeah. Rocking the baby. Don't let Yvonne scare you guys though. She just more mobile that well, way. That's easy for me to definitely just stretch when I hold it like that. <laughs> you know, the challenge is trying to kiss my foot, right? So kiss your baby. We do have someone asking you know, when we address stretching, can we address um hyperextension a lot? What to how to not do that. Yeah, that's an awesome question. So let's go on to a leg stretch. What do you think, Yvonne? Mm -hmm. All right. So when we're doing, we call a leg stretch or back of the leg. So the hamstrings and maybe the calf area. And so we might have two chairs. I love yoga in two chairs because it's really essentially bringing the mat or the earth up. So you want to show leg stretch where you place one leg on the ottoman. Awesome, awesome. And then Yvonne says she likes to use her leg lifter for her stretching. I love it. We do have yoga straps that we use, but she's discovered that she really likes it. Why do you like the leg lifter? I like the leg lifter because it's easy to grab my foot with the end step or wherever I want to go with it and lift it as I want from here or here. I can go down to it or whatever I need. I can do it with that. Okay, so let's so show let's lifting. show the leg stretch. This is an awesome tool. I think everyone needs one of these in their home. So we lift up first, up and out of the waist. Mm -hmm. And then we start to come forward until you maybe you now go, don't go so far yet, right? Like she, Yvonne knows where she can go. She's <laughs> been doing this for a while, but you might start, you might feel the stretch right here, right? Right. Before you start to bring your torso closer towards your thigh. Mm -hmm. And now show them how that would look if you go a little bit more, keeping your shoulders back. So the only thing, or oh, I see what. Well, we want to try not to muscle the yoga strap or the leg stretch because that I notice as yoga teachers that brings in um, tension into the hands. Okay. So keeping the shoulders on the back as we lean forward, you don't have to go all the way up there towards the foot. Okay. okay. <laughs> what are you feeling right now, Ben? I feel a stretch in the back of my legs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So you talked about or the question was about hyperextension. So one of the strategies we use in um, yoga is to either place, when you're on the 
floor on the mat, you could put a little rolled washcloth or a, some type of material or a blanket underneath the knee so that it doesn't hyperextend. Mm -hmm. That would be one method. Um, we have some inventiveness that goes on in the yoga room where people will put something under here so you can't. The other one is to push down on the heel isometrically and then pull it towards you. Yeah, and your knee lifts a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Um, do you have any comments about this, Dr. Gretchen? Anything you would add or um, strategies for the knee not locking when we stretch to, to help prevent that? Yeah, so for the for hyperextension or knee locking, same thing as what Mindy just said, where if you're in the position of Yvonne right now or if you're on the floor, my favorite thing is what Mindy said of putting a rolled towel or something under your knee the reason that's my favorite is because when you do that, your muscles can just relax. You don't actively have to use them. And then you're usually able to get a better stretch. But another thing, as Mindy just said, you can push down through your heel and naturally your knee will start to bend. Or if you're in the position that I'm in right now, what you can do is don't put your leg out as far. So normally oh. you'll stay fully straight in, up tall and then hinge. But if you're hyperextending, don't fully straighten it. So keep it a little bit bent on purpose, same stretch, and you'll still feel it, but you you won't be locking that knee. Mm -hmm. We do have a question about, um, they say when they stretch like that, their leg always goes into a spasm. Oh, that's an awesome one. That's a good one. That's a, good one. That's a real good one. So we see the other lot. Um, I think that's part of, First of all, warming up the leg, maybe with a little massage. These are yoga things, and, and we're going to hear what Dr. Gretchen has to say about this too. Um, sometimes we massage the area first, or even use a rolling pin or a cane to kind of get the area. I don't know if you can see this, but just taking a cane or a rolling pin behind there and or your hands, your fingertips, and massaging it to kind of warm up the back of the leg. And another strategy is to, to really start at the beginning and only find the stretch, like what well, Dr. Gretchen was saying, don't straighten the leg all the way. So that would be a strategy and to slowly straighten it as you feel the stretch. If the spasm comes in, in class, we usually say back off, mm -hmm. come out of it, I breathe, mm -hmm. take a break, when the spasm quiets back down and talk nice to it, then you can go back in again. When I was first beginning um, as a yoga teacher and people came in with these spastic legs, and I'd be like, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna, we're gonna fight this spasm. But what have we learned? Right, right, that you have to do what you just said. You have to take your time, you're rather. Yeah, you can't fight a spasm. The best thing to do is let the spasm huh. do its thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a good friend and yoga teacher um, who doesn't have a mess. He has paraplegia, but he wakes up every morning and he lets his legs just go, let that spasm go. That's one strategy okay. is to yeah. let it go. Don't fight it. Um, in yoga, we also talk about direction. So gently pressing the way you want the energy to go out through the leg and visualizing that and really tuning into sensation. Mm -hmm. What would you say about it, Dr. Gretchen? Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that you're saying. One thing that I would add is to notice when you're feeling it. So for example, yes. some people, let's just stick with the hamstring stretch, for example, some people might feel it just from simply getting into that position, whereas others might not feel a spasm or notice a spasm until you start to lean into it. So as Mindy said, just go slow, start with just get into the position and fully relax there. How does it feel? If there's spasming, can you change the angle? Can you just maybe recline backwards? Or if you engage your core, does it start to lessen? If you focus on just fully letting that leg be dead weight, does that make it lessen? Once the spasm does start, I agree with Mindy, just you got to let it, let it go, let it calm down on its own. 
But if you can be in this position comfortably, it's not until you lean forward, then go slow, literally like one centimeter at a time. First, just slowly sit up tall. That increases the stretch. So just stay here. If you're okay there, a centimeter forward. That's still okay, a little bit. And you take your time really getting into that stretch. It mm -hmm. might mean that the stretch takes you five minutes instead of one minute, but it's worth mm -hmm. it to just get a good stretch without that spasming kicking in. Yes, and, and we have students tell us that just breathing and focusing on releasing that exhale of letting go can really help the body to soften and they've noticed that there's spasticity lessons as well. Very good, very good. Can you hold a stretch too long? So there's different types of stretching. And if you are starting off your day, maybe it's the morning or you're about to exercise, if your muscles are what you would call cold, meaning you just haven't moved a whole lot yet, then one of the best types of stretches that you can do is called dynamic stretching. So let's do the figure four because that's gonna feel good for me. So <laughs> if you're doing any, any stretch, instead of just getting into that position and holding, normal, normal static stretching is about 20 to 30 second hold, then you let it down and you relax and then you do again, 20 to 30 second hold. But if your muscles are cold or it's the first movement that you're doing, dynamic stretching has been shown in research to be even more effective, which essentially means you get into the position and you get into the spot where you feel a good, strong stretch and you hold for about three seconds and then you relax. And relaxing just means you don't feel the stretch at all or as much. And then you go back into it. One, two, three relax. One. So how long would you repeat that? Or how many times would you repeat that? Yeah. So you would repeat this about 20 to 30 times. So this might take about two minutes or so, but about 20 to 30 times of just that three second hold. And of course you do it on both sides. So that's dynamic stretching. Static stretching is the typical 20 to 30 second hold. And you would do that two to three times per side and per muscle group, or there's prolonged static stretching. So this is sometimes, I would say maybe oftentimes what yoga um, practitioners do is more of a, a prolonged static, which you hold for a longer amount of time. And that could be anywhere. If you're doing yin yoga, it might be anywhere from like five to seven minutes, maybe. Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a longer time, like several minutes. And that has been shown in research to be better for spasticity versus just tight muscles. So those are the three main types in the PT world. Thank you. Um, yes, there's restorative yoga where you're using props to help you and we're using the chair and no props are not a sign of weakness they are they help us move into poses to make them more acceptable whether we have a physical challenge or not restorative yoga you might be in a pose such as the reclining twist um and you would hold it for a while on each side like you said and it kind of depends on um, how long you would hold it for. Um, there is yin yoga where they hold it for quite a while, and there's a lot of work around that and fascia and how it impacts the Chinese meridians. Um, that's where the origination of that. So we have restorative yoga, we have yin yoga, and they do define themselves as different. Um, and we try to do a combination in class. Um, and, and people can then find what really helps them feel better. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned about leaning back. The question about if you lean back, will the hip flexors get a little upset, a little crazy? <laughs> it depends on how tight you are. So if you have really tight hip flexors, then you might feel that because your hip flexors, some of your hip flexors run all the way up into your lower abdomen. That's that psoas muscle and then comes down beyond your hip. So simply extending, opening up 
is technically stretching that psoas or that hip flexor muscle. So if you're really tight, you might feel that. Other people might not feel it at all. It's really going to depend on what, which of your hip flexors is tight and where it's tight. Cause it could be the higher end. I will sometimes do a hip flexor stretch, which let me get back a little bit further. So one of my favorite hip flexor stretches, your feet go wide, you hold on to your chair and you swivel so that this knee faces down from here. You would tuck your hip under now, depending on where you are tightest, everyone feels this different. Some people might feel this more in their quad muscles, the front of their thigh. Others might feel it in their hip flexors right here. Others might feel it in their psoas. They actually feel it up in their abdomen area. There's no right or wrong as long as you're feeling it somewhere on that front side. It can be a tricky one to get into. And if you notice any bouncing like this, that is clonus. It's because of the angle of your ankle so flat in your toes, and you might need to shimmy the leg slightly further back and tuck again. But again, the, there's lots of hip flexors. There's lots of muscles in this area. So you're going to feel it wherever you are tightest. Yeah, we do that too. And sometimes um, we use blocks. Yvonne has long legs. So your knee may actually come, I'm gonna, let's see what happens here. You can use blocks or blankets to help raise the floor. So Yvonne's knee is almost coming down. And I find this is a balance pose for people too. Absolutely. Um, maybe a blanket goes underneath. We also find that sometimes people's, they get a spasm right here or their foot cramps. Mm -hmm. And so a blanket can be very helpful under there as well. Um, how's that feeling then? That feels great. Now you're not holding on to the back of the chair and we could even add to this a little bit. We mm -hmm. rotate, and then we might take an arm, the outside arm and lift it up towards the sky and how does that change it for you? I feel it straight down. Straight down, mm -hmm. straight down. And then maybe pull your ribs back a little bit. Yeah. Um, anything you would add to this back regression in terms of how to modify it? Um, the other option that you could do, so this is my favorite one, but again, you can stretch your hip flexors on the floor or even standing. Uh, so if you were to do it standing, of course, have something that you can hold on to because whenever we're stretching, we don't want to be focusing on strength or balance at the same time. We just want to focus on stretching. So I love Mindy's props that she uses because it, it makes it easier to feel the stretch. So you would stand within a staggered stance, one leg back, one leg forward, both knees are bent. So for that person asking about hyperextension, you'd actively bend your knees. And then again, tuck your butt under as far as you can. And it's the same idea. You'll feel the stretch anywhere from up here, if your psoas is tight, to down here, or even the front of your thigh. And then you'd switch on the other side as well. So this is technically the same stretch, just more in a standing position, if that's more feasible for you. Well, we'll just show it on the earth too. So, um, because I'd like to, this is one of the things we do in our um, training. People love, we're like, well, how can you do a pose in different, in different ways? So here's it on the mat. And you certainly could do this in that um, as well. So you start in what we call Sphinx pose and then bring one arm kind of parallel with the mat. So it's, it's about under, just a little bit forward of the shoulders and then bend one knee and you either grab you know, the pants or the ankle or the foot or use the strap. Now we also do it like this because some students don't like going on their belly and it hurts their lower back. I should mention, sometimes we put a blanket underneath the ribs as well, the cushion mat, but um, you go on your side and students taught me this one. They bring the knee in, they grab the ankle or foot, and then they swing it back. And that is a nice way to get the stretch too. 
I notice if I don't, if my ribs are going forward, I don't feel this at all. But if I pull them back and then pull the heel and gently or gently and slowly towards the box, I get a little bit more of a stretch, but I'm pretty stretchy. <laughs> and um, we want to make sure the knee stays level with the hip. That's another thing that tends to happen is this. You want to add anything to that? Well, you made a good point of how, like, if you're, if your ribs are out, if you're like arching like this, you're not feeling it as much. And I'm glad you mentioned that because so often, if you feel like, well, I look like Mindy, I'm in the same position as her, but I don't feel it so often. It's actually the position of your lower back or even your rib cage that can be tweaked and then you'll instantly feel it. So in the case of hip flexors, the more rounded you are. So the more, if your ribs are poking out, you're not going to feel it as much, but if you round your torso and round your hips, you'll feel it more with something on the back side, like your glutes or hamstring, the more you arch, you'll actually feel it more. So the first, anytime someone ever says, well, I don't feel it. The first thing that I say is, you know, depending on which muscle we're stretching, um, stick your belly button out a little bit further or suck your belly button in. And almost always are able to feel at least a little something in the right area, just from tweaking their upper body posture, not from moving the stretch at all. Yeah. Alignment means a lot. And, and there's so many different, like camel pose will actually bring in a thigh stretch as well, which you can use a chair and if your knees are okay, excuse me for one minute, you got here. And a lot of times people feel stretch right here before even going into the back bend, something like this. Um, there's so many different ways to get at it. We've also noticed that like doing the leg stretch first is really helpful for the back of the leg and then doing the front of the leg. It just depends on the person though. So they're really tight in their hamstrings. That's when it'll cramp up when you're doing a thigh stretch, the front of the thigh stretch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's just do a little bit of upper body. I don't know. Do we have a question? We have a couple of, uh, uh, they asked if we could touch a couple more body parts. One was, <laughs> in, um, let's see. We, one wanted to have stretching for hands. Stretching helps with hand cramping, stiffness, and pain. And then one asked if we could have some special stretching, or is there a special stretching for chronic pelvic floor pain? Ooh, that's a whole topic in and of itself, Dr. Gretchen. We might have to have another section on that yeah. one. <laughs> Yeah, the pelvic floor is such an amazing topic and there are pelvic floor specialized physical therapists, but everyone, everyone has a pelvic floor, men and women. And when we're talking about releasing tension, some people have too tight of pelvic floors. Others have too loose pelvic floors. Some have a lot of strength. Some have no strength. And there's any combination you can be tight and weak. You can be tight and strong. You can be any combination. And so I highly recommend anyone with any type of pelvic floor condition actually go to a pelvic floor PT because you might feel like you're tight, but it's actually just contraction or weakness posing as that way. Because if you're weak, your muscles have to tighten. And so if you focus on strengthening instead of stretching, the pelvic floor might improve. With that said, there are a decent amount of stretches because so many hip and thigh muscles attach up near our pelvic floor. So one of my favorites, let me scoot back again, is here, is more of an inner thigh or butterfly type stretch. Mm -hmm. So I like to do most of my exercises seated on a chair because then you don't have to get down to the floor but opening your feet and your knees as wide as you can. So you don't, wouldn't want this angle. So your knees are wide. And then from here, you can either place your hands or your forearms down and you just lean forward. And you should feel this stretch either on one side or both sides of your inner thigh. Again, everyone's gonna feel this differently. You might feel it more near your knees or more right near the pelvic floor or somewhere in the middle. You could even add a turn and you're pushing that thigh away from you. 
Same thing on the other side. Another really great pelvic floor stretch is the gentleman's pose. That first one, Yvonne, and my favorite one. Mm -hmm. Our glutes are so close to our pelvic floor, they wrap around. So having tightness here can result in a tight pelvic floor as well. But this is one of my favorite go-tos and there's lots of different positions that you can do this in. Now we call that goddess pose, Dr. Gretchen. <laughs> and then some people call it horsey pose. <laughs> Um, and then you mentioned butterfly and Yvonne's a butterfly, which can be done in two chairs and it can be done on the mat or in bed. And this is also one of those poses that can be done reclining is more of a restorative pose. Mm -hmm. Um, and then do you, what do you feel it, man? I feel the strain in the legs and I feel it also in my lower you back. feel strain? No, not a strain. It feels like it's a, a stretch. I see. It's a stretch when you come forward a little mm -hmm. bit more. Come forward now, you know you don't have to touch your toes. Don't let them think out there that they have to touch their toes okay. back. I'm sorry. I like touching my toes. I'm sorry. I like to feel the stretch, even though it's not good all the time. And sometimes I'm really bad for wanting to feel it so I can keep going with it. That's all. all You're not allowed to use that word bad. Okay. I'm not using it. Don't allow it, I should say. Bad word, bad word. One thing also about the pelvic floor, as we're doing these stretches, most people hold their pelvic floor tight and contracted without even realizing it. So when you're doing these stretches, as we were talking about back in the beginning, just being aware, what does it feel like? And then also just take a moment to relax your pelvic floor, let go, let your belly hang out, let your pelvic floor relax. At least for me, if I don't mentally focus on that, my pelvic floor just stays tight. That that's just the position that I'm in all day long. So you have to mentally relax everything if you do have more of the tight pelvic floor versus uh, relaxed pelvic floor. Yeah, we always start with the breath in yoga, mm -hmm. and um, we go around in class and spend a lot of time on looking whether it's a functional breath, it's a diaphragmatic breath, and there, there is considered to be another diaphragm, which is our pelvic floor diaphragm. And so we want that breath to be flowing in a functional way, or that will cause some pelvic floor concerns and dysfunction. So that, that is the first step. And then it's the second step once you're in these poses mm -hmm. as well to breathe in them. Right. And um, another, sorry, just one more thing about that. Um, another piece of for the pelvic floor as well is core strengthening. I have worked with so many clients where we just specifically focus on core, but from that work, they will tell me that their pelvic floor feels better. They're having better bowel movements, better urination, more control. So pelvic floor is a combination of stretching and strengthening, not only the hips, but also the core. So just something else to keep in mind. That's a great point. Um, so people asked about the hands, or we had a question about hands. Um, one that we like to do is to have, to press the palm forward and then use your other hand to pull the fingers towards you. Make sure the shoulder is relaxed. Yeah, Yvonne is showing it. And then move your thumb out too, because that gets really tight in there. Yes, it does. Yeah, you can also turn it down and do the same kind of thing. Um, ooh, turn sideways, sorry. <laughs> turn sideways. So gently pulling, this area gets super tight for me in the thumb and the pointer finger. Um, you can also give your thumb a hug with your other hand. So left hand hugs, right thumb, and then gently pulls it back a little bit and that'll give a good stretch too. Um, and you can actually give it a little traction. So give it like pull it. So you feel a little space in your joint and then take it back. That's one to get in the stretches there. We have all kinds of hand mudras we do in yoga as well that help out. I'm always amazed by taking the arm out like this and flexing it, wow, is that powerful. Um, and then you can take your hand down and do something like that. When we're on the mat, 
we won't get into it, but this can be this this is one of the stretches. Um, as long as your knees are okay to get down on your knees, um, this is really nice to rock forward and back and get a release. And even just circling, putting your thumbs on the inside of the palms and circling around. What would you add to this, Dr. Gretchen? You probably got some tricks up your sleeve. Yeah, these are all amazing. The one, the two things that I'm thinking of is also think about what position your hands are in the remainder of the day. Most of us, if we're relaxed and if our palms are down, our hands are just kind of clenched, not intensely, but they're just more rounded. Very rarely do we ever relax with our hands just open <laughs> or, or like nice and wide. And so just more of a reason where if you have really tight hands or, you know, those uh, flexed fingers, these stretches that Mindy are giving do multiple times throughout the day. And then also there might be some form of positioning or splinting that you could do when you're not stretching. So I don't have anything in with me right now, but an example could be a rolled up towel. If your hand is more so flexed like this, get a big rolled up towel to put over your hand like this so that when you are relaxing it down, it's at least a little bit more extended and then again, if you're picturing this, instead of it being nice and short, it's at least a little bit stretched so that over time, this will be the new position and you'll stretch from there. That's nice. This one I like a lot. This like with the wash rag, just kind of going up and down like that. That might get a little bit more into the wrist area and the back of the hand. Um, another really good thing to do is take like the pinky ball or that nerve ball and or this comes with that little ball inside and roll around, you know, put the ball on a tabletop and roll around. You want to feel that? Mm -hmm. Oh, that feels wonderful. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Sometimes it. tightness can stem from tightness on this side, which is what this type of stretching, the rolling that Yvonne's doing right now is really helpful and or weakness on the extensor side. So oftentimes, anytime I have a client who, who is more flex and are trying to really just stretch out their hand, we pair it with strengthening for the backside, which might mean something like if you picture a table here, <laughs> uh, lifting all your fingers up and then down up and then, or even one finger at a time. And they have tools for this. They have a lot of different adaptive devices, um, that you could use are on Amazon really great. But, you know, so co combining strengthening for this side, stretching for this side, if you do have more of that flexed position. That's a great idea. So also along that line, let's do a side stretch. If you guys can follow along with us and do a side stretch, we have different ways of doing it. Yvonne, do you want to hold the cane? Of course, the purple cane, <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. And you can show a side stretch with your arms up, right? Yeah, and then we can take a side stretch towards the right. Yeah, gently pull that back a little bit. You can always bend your elbows if it feels like it's too much on your shoulders. Lean the head slightly. Let's talk through your heart. There you go, there you go. And then inhale, come on up and side bend towards the left. How's that feel? Where are you feeling the stretch you've been? I feel it in my shoulders. I feel it in my um in my in the back of my arms as well. Yeah. There's a little trick if your hands get tired and you don't, and you uh, one way is to make a loop with a strap. You don't have to buy a yoga strap, but they are handy with these buckles. And you can place your wrists or your forearms in there and then do the same thing, do a side stretch. Side stretches are awesome for stretching the sides of the body. They really help with our breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if, it, if it's tough to bring the arms up overhead, you can always have bent elbows too. I would show the side bend. Sometimes it's really it's a lot on the shoulder to lift the arm up, but this is a side bend leading to the right. This is a side bend. Wow, time is going, Kathy's telling me. 
So we I did have another question too about stand. Are there any um, stretches that are good for helping to increase the amount of time people can stand that their back um, gets sore when they stand too long? Oh, their back gets sore when they stand too long. Their back gets really tight after a few minutes. I have to sit. Oh. So one of my teachers said that the legs are the governor of the back, which I think, so definitely stretching your legs can help with your back. We love cat cow, don't we? Yes. So why don't you show cat cow? So hands on your thighs or your knees, and then we're going to as we exhale, we're going to take our chin to our chest and our sitting bones angle downwards. That's cat pose. And now we want to show a cow pose. So it's the opposite direction. Her shoulder blades are coming together in cow. Where do you feel this, Yvonne, in your, your body? Well, I really feel it all over my body because I can I'm stretching everything in my upper and my thighs. So I feel it all over my body as I'm breathing in and out. So you're moving the spine in one C curve and hit, and then you're reversing it in the other. And when you go into cow, I should say, we teach to bring the sitting bones back. And that helps to get a little bit more, but you can also change your focus to either upper back or lower back as you do this. It really helps. Are you feeling it in between your shoulder blades when you do the cat? Uh, yes, I am. I'm feeling it when I'm doing the cat, and then when I'm doing the cow, I feel them pulling them back. You want to add anything, Dr. Gretchen, about different stretches for the spine to help with standing? There's so many, right? Yeah. So <laughs> many. This There's, is a really nice, accessible one. Anything you want to say about yeah. this? Um, so another one of my favorite seated stretches for before you stand is a twist. We, yes. we don't get enough side bending or twisting throughout the day. And yes. so just wake your spine up, wake those muscles up. So twist one way and then twist the other way. And one thing that is important to think about if you're trying to stand longer is when you get fatigued and when you start feeling pain, if you are someone who feels that low back pain, what position are you in when that starts? For example, if you can stand for two minutes, but then you start getting low back pain and you notice you're here, this, this posture is a sign of hip flexor tightness. So you'd want to do any of those hip flexor stretches that we were showing earlier. Or if you are just more rounded like this, this is a sign of hamstring and glute tightness. So you might wanna do some of those hamstring or glute stretches because before you stand. So you're warming the spine up, but you're also stretching whichever muscles are the ones that kick in when you start getting that low back pain. Yeah, you could even do some stretches before you get up in the morning in bed, like this, the, the reclining twist that we were talking about. I have to say that uh, we talk about we talk about all kinds of things in the yoga room. So a twist in the chair can also be done on the body, <laughs> which helps with some different types of movement in the body. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so we're coming in. You, you can even. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, wait, you say you're going to say Dr. Gretchen and then we'll go through the other questions. Yep. I was just going to say, you could even do those standing next to a wall, you know, do the twist next to a wall. Yeah. You could do the, You can stretch in any position, which is why it's so important that you just understand where you should feel each stretch because anytime I'm working with a client and they'll say, am I doing this right? And we're talking about a stretch. My first response to them is, well, where do you feel it? Because you might look a little bit different than the next person, but if you're feeling it in the right spot, then it doesn't matter what you look like, you're getting the right stretch. So standing seated in a chair, seated on a couch, lying down, so many options. Yeah, they certainly can be modified to change where you feel it. Like even that reclining twist, where your knees are will make a difference. You know, how much they're bent mm -hmm. will change it up. What are some of the questions, Kathy? One was, should you should you not stretch cold muscles? I've heard that. 
you can stretch cold muscles. I would just use that dynamic stretching that we were talking about in the beginning where it's that like two to three second hold, then release two to three second hold and then release. But it's not the same as bouncing. Uh, there's, you know, ever this is one of my biggest pet peeves. You'll see people, even I'll do, do my arm, for example, you're bouncing, like stretch, pull, 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 pull. Bouncing is not necessarily a good form of stretching. It would be the hold two, three, release a stretch, hold two, three, and release regardless of what muscle it is. M Mindy, what do you think? I agree. Now I did have one teacher who taught, she was a fascia expert. And she taught to do some, they were little bouncings against the wall. They were doing an arm like this. So she said it was like lubricating. It's a little bit different. Yeah, that's a little yeah, different. And then we would do something like this. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, I think it wakes it up a little bit and it's very gentle. Yeah, I agree. And there's also many ways to wake up your muscles. Even like if we're just sticking with our arms, if you're going to be using your shoulders, just something like this will warm them up. You don't need like an actual exercise routine to get your muscles to not be cold. Just, just move them. Even just shaking can work. Uh, if we're talking about our legs, massaging, just like with your hand, rolling with a ball, there's lots of just quick and simple things that you can do to wake up your muscles and then go for a stretch. Yeah, a lot of times we start with just little shoulder circles. It feels so good. It's a, it's really a nice little massage before we start to get into more movement or stretches. It feels really good. You could do the same thing. You pick up a leg and circle around. That's getting a little bit more into joint mobility, but I, you might feel your inner thigh stretch the bigger the circle is. Other questions, Kathy? Will stretching help with the numbness and burning sensation in my feet that affects my balance? Is there a particular position or stretch that will help this? Are there stretching to help hand weakness and cramping, which I think we went over some of that, some hands. Part. Yeah, we did. But the feet, is the stretching, will stretching help the numbness and burning sensation that affects balance? And is there any particular position that will help the numbness and burning in their feet? So now we're talking about neuropathy and, and would you say that, Dr. Gretchen? Yeah, so the yes or no, it depends on what's causing the neuropathy or, you know, numbness, tingling, burning, pins and needles, any sensory change can either stem from MS itself or, and what I mean by that is MS affects your motor nerves and your sensory nerves. So if you have any weakness, that's, that's the motor nerves that are being, you know, demyelinated and affected, but any type of sensory change can be the sensory nerves that have demyelination or they're being affected in some way. If that's the case, there's exercises that you can do, like putting your foot in rice and moving it around or being like sensory type exercises. But the other option could simply be orthopedic. Your nerves run through muscles. So if your muscles are tight, it's pinching the nerves. And pinched nerves, regardless of where they are in your body, can cause numbness, tingling, burning pins and needles. So if that's the case, stretching absolutely can help. Now, where you stretch will be dependent on which muscle it is that's tight. Oftentimes it's actually your glutes, so that gentleman's stretch. So that back here, it could be your hamstring. It could be your hip flexor. Uh, it, it really depends on where it is, but a lot of the stretches that we've done today can help with that. Even though we didn't specifically stretch the foot, nine times out of 10, it's not, the foot is not the problem. It's stemming from somewhere higher up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but someone asked, actually, more, this one was um, asked a few times. Can someone repeat the advantages of the different types of stretching? You want to? Take that one on, Dr. Gretchen. Sure. Yep. So there's the three different types of stretching. The first is dynamic. So that would be the hold for two to three seconds, release. And you would do that about 20 to 30 times. The second type is static stretching, which is, I think, what most people think of. It's that 20 to 30 second hold. You'd hold, 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 20 to 30 seconds. And you would do that about two to three times each side. And then the third was prolonged static. And this is the type that research shows is best for spasticity. And it's 
you know, holding for anywhere from three to five minutes, seven minutes. The thing about this type of stretch is you should be in the most relaxed position possible. So oftentimes it is lying on your bed or having someone help you so that you can just relax as someone else is stretching your arm or your leg. But those are the three types that I usually um, deal with. So the relaxing would help. Like I've heard people say that you can't hold a pose too long because it might invite in some spasticity. But if it's relaxed with different props, that would help that. Right. And, you know, and then we get into the, the conversation of what type of stretching in the sense of active stretching versus active assisted or passive. Active stretching would be me using the muscles at the same time that I'm stretching them. For example, if I'm stretching my hamstrings and I'm standing and doing this, I feel the stretch in my hamstrings, but my hamstrings are also working. If they weren't working, I would crumble to the floor. So that would be more of an active stretch or active assisted is what Yvonne was doing earlier where she had it up on something and then she was pulling forward and completely passive would probably be, this might be passive, but more times than not passive means someone else is stretching you. And they're all great options. I would, I always encourage people to try the three different types of stretching and play around with those because some people feel their best stretch with active, active dynamic or active static. Other people it's active assisted. There, there's no right or wrong. Okay. Now that brings in, uh, you mentioned that when you're standing, the hamstring is working and stretching at the same time in the forward fold. Um, is there anything to contracting the front muscles, the quads, while you're doing that in order to stretch? I've read about this antagonist protagonist. Yeah. So it depends what your goal is. You absolutely can engage the opposite muscles. So in that case, when we're trying to stretch our hamstrings, and we're down like this, so we're trying to stretch our backside. If you actively either straighten your knees or tighten your quads, you may feel a better stretch on the backside, but your muscles are working even more. So it's a very active stretch. So you could try it, see if you like it. If it doesn't feel like it makes any difference to you or you don't really like it, another option is just try to relax as much as possible, which might mean you use a chair for your hands. Your legs are not actively doing a whole lot. They're really wobbly and wiggly, mm -hmm. but you still feel the stretch in this position. So both are good options. And we had a, two more physical questions and, a, and a, one question about, is it possible to get a written summary of the exercises? But maybe you wanna address. <laughs> okay, so what was the first one again? Uh, well, it's, I the, the, this is just a process one. They wanna know if there's gonna be a written Summary. Okay, so what there will be a few different things. One is the recording will be on Dr. Gretchen's YouTube and my YouTube. Also, um, we blog, it'll be put in a blog on our website. So that will be in writing if that's the best way that you um, like to see the information. Um, and we also do have um, different resources that you can go to, such as one of our prizes today, which is the adaptive yoga card. And we're almost at that time, Dr. Gretchen, for our prizes. Um, I'll just show this quickly. These are adaptive yoga cards, and there's different poses for on your seat, on your feet, and they're color coded, like this one's on your seat. Um, and then on the back are different options. I would bring it closer. Bring it closer, Kathy says. So there's a whole bunch of different cards in here, not too many, just enough. And there is also um, the instructions are very brief, so easy to follow. And if you really want detail in a 400 page book on the different yoga pages, you may not want that much information. We do understand that. Um, and, and also we have an on demand now where you can look at different um, stretching and classes on, on our site. There were two more questions about um, physical issues. One was, is there a stretch for heaviness of the legs? And the other is, is there anything that can help 
Plica, P L I C A, in the knee. Plica in the knee. I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is, Dr. Gretchen? Plica, Plica. P L I C A. Yeah. So Plica is, how would you even describe it? It's almost like debris in the knee. So if is the question how what is the question about anything like, that can help plica plica in the knee or plica in the knee? Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, usually if someone has plica, they go in for, I mean, I hate to call it a surgery. It technically is, but it's a very, very um non-invasive, but they go and they literally just clear it out. And that is so, so, so effective. In terms of stretching, it's more something that's in the joint. So I don't think that stretching or strengthening would have a huge difference on the plica that's in the knee, but stretching and strengthening can always help reduce knee pain in general. And almost always, if the pain is in the knee, strengthening is, and stretching the muscles above and below is where you'd want to focus the most. So like the hip and the ankle in terms of strength and mobility. And then th did you have anything to add to that, Mindy? I, I'm just nodding. As you go, I was thinking about yoga therapy. We always look above or below where the concern is. So yeah. Just not at what you were saying. Yeah. And then the other question was, is there a stretch for heaviness of the legs? Well, I think what we've done, some of the stretches okay. we've done today are actually very helpful for feeling that heaviness. What would you say about that, Yvonne? Do your legs feel heavier? Heavy, heavier? Yes, all the time, especially my left leg feels more heavier than my right leg. And all I do is some of the things that you have um, demonstrated is just lifting it up and down, even if it's just hitting the floor. That seems to help me. But, um, and the stretching in and out, it helps the heaviness of the legs and whatever else I could do to help um, just stretch the legs. Yes, and strengthen them. And strengthen them at the same time. The squats help the legs for that reason. Ah, the yoga squats help the legs for that. That's the strengthening thing. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Because people are starting to say they have to sign. Okay, up. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do our Dr. Gretchen. Do you want to talk about your prize today? Sure. Yeah. So I am offering away one complimentary month of the missing link, which is my online program. And in this program is where you will find all of my favorite MS specific strengthening, stretching, balance, and walking exercises in a demonstration like we did today and calendars that will tell you exactly which exercises to do each day based on your goals. So you'll have the exercises and the calendar. So you know exactly what you're going to be doing. And then we also have monthly guest experts. We have an accountability group. We've got live classes. So mostly just this online resource for you to work towards your goals of walking better, walking longer, walking stronger, standing better, getting strength, all that good stuff. Awesome. That's a really great prize. Thank you for that. Um, the other prizes that we have are adaptive <laughs> yoga cards, which we've talked about before. Um, so that's one of the prizes. And the other one is our two months of our on-demand free, uh, where you can look at different classes on the Yoga Moves site. So Yvonne, you are going to pull out who's going to win. All right, let me do a little finger. This will be for the adaptive, this will be the adaptive yoga cards. Now, these are a little print. I'll see if I can read this or you read this. <laughs> Here we go. Um, Amy Roberts. Is Amy Roberts online? Amy, answer. If you don't answer, we go to the next person. <laughs> okay, Yvonne. No answer coming, Kathy? No answer coming. No okay, answer. all right. Here's another one. I gotta put these glasses back on here. Leslie Knowles. Is Leslie on? Come on, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep going, everybody. No Leslie, huh? All right, we just keep going. We got one here. Julia Boyle. No Julia Boyle. 
All right, here we go. We keep going. Bonita McNutt. This is weird. This is very really, really weird. <laughs> <laughs> We have a lot. We have over. We have up to a hundred at one point. So okay, still Jenny nice. Best. These people are going to watch the recording and be super bummed. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry Trucky. Wow, guys. We could be here a while. We didn't think this would take that long. Oh, Liz. Liz? Elizabeth from Michigan. Liz, I'm going to say your name, your last name wrong. I am here, but I have those cards. Guess oh. what? You're going to get something else, Liz. We'll, we'll talk about you. it. You can have the leg lifter. You can have a yoga move. Sure. Liz is one of, she has been with us for a while. She's one of, all right. Yeah, she's a star student. And you can see Liz in one of our videos, too. She's a star. Mm -hmm. Liz is a star. Liz, you get whatever you want. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so now this one will be for um, the on demand. Oh, I got to read this again. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Ann Keller. No, Ann Keller. Felicia Kelly. Here we go. Monica Cummins. Oh, wait. I see Catherine says she's here. Wait a minute. Which Did one? Did we draw Catherine? Did we? Was I that don't... a while ago? I don't remember a Catherine. I don't either. I don't either. Okay. Keep okay. going. We keep going. All right. Monica. It was Cummins. a mistake. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Monica Cummins. Here, you do this. You're so welcome. <laughs> I thought you enjoyed it. Sorry, do this. Oh, oh, Sandy Wexler. Sandy, are you on? <laughs> nope. All right, we just keep Oh, wait, there's a Sandy on. Sandy's here. Sandy's here. Somebody just signed yeah. up. I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. You're here. All right. You are a winner of the on demand. All right. Now we're doing the missing. Yeah, nothing like I always do that. I always do that. Are you ready? This is for Dr. Gretchen's gift, the one month. And I'm holding Rasheen Rainey in my hand. Rasheen on here? They're going to be really bummed, Dr. Gretchen. I'm here, Rasheen Rainey. Oh, she's out. Wow, I cannot believe this. I want something. <laughs> you guys are all winners. You guys are all winners. Yeah. <laughs> We're so glad that you joined us today. Um, for MS Awareness Month, our on demand is 50% off. So one month is $10 and one year or $9.99 and one year is $99. So we hope you. Um, take advantage of that. Plus, there's two. There's ten days free in the beginning. Here come the boys. We are so grateful for all of you being with us today. Oh the verdict will go out. Oh my God. And we will have the vlog. This is Oscar and Felix. They came to say Namaste too. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doctor Gretchen. Thank you so much, uh, Thank you, Mindy and Doctor Gretchen. Of We're course. So Thank you guys for Thank having you. me. Thank Any you, lovely ladies. That you have that we didn't get to, just email me and we'll make sure that Dr. Gretchen sees that as well. Namaste, namaste, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, how many did we go through there, Eva? <laughs> Hi, Mindy. I don't have your email. Mindy, I don't know why. At yoga moves mm -hmm. ms dot org. You know what, Kathy? You can put it I in the chat. I just put it in the chat. Oh, thank you. 
Bye, everyone. All right, so we will contact you um, if you're the winner, or you can contact us. Right, Dr. Gretchen, how do you want that to work? Yeah, either way. So either contact Mindy or myself, and then I'll, we'll go back and forth via email to make sure you are signed up correctly. Okay, thank you. Rasheen, I'll send you a DM with my email as well. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you, everyone. Take care, enjoy your Saturday, enjoy the, I know Dr. Gretchen has a bunch of activities, make sure you look She's got them posted all over social media and probably on her site and in her email. So make sure you're on both of our email lists and you'll know what's going on. Um, we're meeting with Dr. Uh, Dr. Music therapist, Betsy Hartman, coming out towards the end of the month. Oh, that'd be very interesting. Yes, yes. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, there you go, ladies. <laughs>